What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Pete's Carport. I appreciate you guys joining me and I know you're going to really like this one because we're going to take these old, beat up, but awesome classic Mercedes rims. These are Renault original rims and we're going to take them to looking like this back to their original glory. So stay tuned on how we're going to do that. Okay guys, so for this project, these are all the tools I use. So I use quite a bit of different things and try to few different techniques. I'm going to break each one of those down, what worked best for me, and I'm going to show you guys from start to end the best technique that I found on rims that are as in bad a condition as mine, and I'll get to that. We're going to look at the first rim. We're going to take off the car here in just a second, and I'm going to show you in order how I used each one of these products to make the job even easier for me. Okay guys, so the first step in doing this is to remove your tired rim. So grab your jack and jack it up just a little bit because if you don't have an impact wrench like I'm going to be using, you need to loosen up the lug nuts first and then go ahead and remove them fully. Make sure you get a nice jack stand and put that in place where it meets the frame and lower the jack down onto the jack stand. This will help stabilize the car so you're able to remove the lug nuts without any danger. I like to shake the car too to make sure the jack stand is in place in a good place. So go ahead now and we can remove our lug nuts and if you have an impact wrench you can see how fast this can be. Okay, so once you get all the lug nuts removed on something that hasn't been taken off in a long time, these rims can get stuck. So you can see me kicking it and pulling it and finally it comes off. Now I'm gonna roll the rim away and we can start cleaning it. Okay, so the first step after removing the tire from the car is gonna to be to clean as much of the dirt and grime off before starting the grinding and sanding section. So I went down and grabbed some Easy Off. I saw this in another video and it worked really, really good on rims that are as bad as these ones here. And this is about as disgusting as you can get from sitting over the years with probably salt and grime and stuff built up on it. Now using this stuff you want to make sure you're outside well ventilated and if necessary wear a mask. I'm going to put my mask on, I'm going to go ahead and spray this down so you guys can see how well it works. Okay guys the, key, guys, the key for this is to let it sit and really do its work. So it's been on there for about five minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab some goggles and my pressure washer, and I'm gonna set the camera back here so you guys can still see, but I'm not gonna hit the camera. So let me go ahead and set up the pressure washer and we're gonna spray away. Okay, as you can see, it's making quite a mess, so you definitely want to set up an area that if you're going to use a pressure washer, that you can splash. Now, a garden hose will work. Not everybody has a pressure washer, but look at how much that did. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is the third wheel that I'm doing, and I did the first two as test subjects, and neither one of them, uh, I spent hours trying to get some of this grime off using just uh, degreaser, uh, scrub brushes, and so forth. So this just pretty much took off everything I did in almost no time at all. So let me go ahead and finish this off. We're gonna flip it around and do the same thing. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do, which you can do prior to doing that one step I just did, is go ahead and remove your uh, valve here. I just cut mine out and also remove any of the weights. I use a flathead screwdriver. I will need two hands to do that. Now, I wanna bring, uh, I basically break this down on what I did to kind of figure out the best method for this. So this uh, wheel here, what I did was I used a uh, paint remover. Probably the worst idea because then what happens is it removes it from a lot of the areas but not in the small crevices. And it made it very difficult because there's so many layers of paint on this. These have been repainted that it was removing some layers in some areas and not in others. And now I've got an insane amount of hand sanding. I went ahead and primed these so I could see exactly where my errors were. Now this one, uh, what I did was did not use the oven cleaner, but use a degreaser and then ground it and then hand sanded it. Probably half the work as the other one and it's already coming out a lot better. I was able to prime it and find 
any of the spots that still needed to be done. So back to this one, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna start using the wire wheel grinder, getting off any of the uh, bad areas. Then we'll move over to the, hand, the, the vibrating sander and then we're gonna go to hand sanding and I'll walk you guys through those steps. Okay guys, so the next step is you wanna grab one, one of these wire wheels if you can. Obviously you can, if you don't have the, uh, the, if your rims are not as bad as these ones, you can definitely step right into either wet sanding or sanding with a vibrating sander depending on how bad uh, the curb rash is or any of the damages on your rims. Now I wanna point out too, removing the valve and the weight is really only necessary if you're going to be doing a full tire change out. These tires are bad, what that allows me to do is do this all this work and paint it without worrying about damaging the tires. I'll make sure you throw on some goggles when using the wire wheel or any type of uh, device that's going to throw dust in the air or pieces of debris. You definitely want to wear protection and wear a mask if you're doing any type of sanding that's dry. So let me go ahead and get set up and I'll show you guys the process. Okay guys, now you can see it. I spent a good 30 to 45 minutes just on this one rim using that wire wheel brush because there's so much uh, oxidation damage. So most of you guys out there even attempting to do this will not have this type of damage on your rims. But just in case somebody does want to re refurbish or redo uh, a rim of this sort, that is a great way to go. You definitely can skip that. Now the next thing I do is I'm going to go with some 80 grit sandpaper on this right here. It will not allow me to get into every area, but what I'll be able to do is get a lot of these flat edges here. Because now that we've ground out a lot of this here, this heavy, heavy paint is, it needs to be flattened so that when we go ahead and paint it, uh, we won't see the difference there. So there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, in order to get into these areas here, I am gonna have to hand sand, starting with the 80 if I can. Now I do have a little trick too, I got this uh, little a uh, stubby wheel thing that goes on the end of the drill that can kind of get into some of these areas but it doesn't work perfect you still got to do a lot of hand sanding so let's get started because we've got uh, quite a bit of work ahead of us to get this to look even halfway decent Okay guys, so this is the rim that I've already done. So basically the steps that I did was um, use the hand sander with the 80 grit, then the 220, and then I just had to hand sand into a lot of these areas that you just cannot get the sander into. And I did the same thing, 80 grit, 220. Then I rinsed it down once again with, um, I actually used a degreaser, and then sprayed the pressure washer, and then I let it dry and I went ahead and sprayed a coat of primer. So what that allowed me to do is kind of see some of the spots that I couldn't see anymore uh, that the primer will stand out. What I did then is I went and hand sanded those with 80 grit, 220, and now I'm gonna grab some 400 grit wet sandpaper and we're gonna wet, uh, wet sand this down. Okay guys, so now after um, going ahead and wet sanding it, I washed it all down and then I wiped it down with a towel and some alcohol. The next thing I'm gonna do is get some glazing putty. Now there was one step that I missed that you may have to do if you have any major 
uh, divots or, or chips or um, you know road rash around the or curb rash around the outside edges that are just too bad to sand out is use a uh, metal body filler. They have a specific filler, I'll put that on the screen now, that you can use for heavier uh, dents and divots. I do have some of those on the other rims that I will show you, uh, but right now I'm gonna basically use the glaze to get into any areas that I can still feel with my finger that are not that smooth that I can't sand away. And some of those are where the oxidation was built up so badly and I had to grind it out and it left a little bit of divots. So let me go ahead and grab that, we'll mix that up and we'll spread it in. Okay guys, so on this uh, Bondo glazing putty, the directions are a little strange. They say to do a one inch circle with your standard um, mix right here. And then for the cream hardener, you want to put a one inch strip. Now I just did that and it seemed like it hardened extremely fast. So I'm gonna go with a little less hardener, which is not a bad idea. It'll give you more time to spread it around. It'll just take a little bit longer to harden. And I wanted to make sure that you guys knew to mix up the hardener and the putty so you don't get a bunch of water that comes out when you go to squeeze it. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze in a little bit of the hardener there. And I'm gonna mix this up. And by hand, I'm actually gonna spread it onto the rim. This way I can smooth it out. And that looks a lot better than my last one. My last one was just way too red. That looks like it's gonna give me a little bit of time and a nice uh, liquid substance that I can kind of spread because this is really just for filling in the small divots. Um, based on the last mix I had, it seemed like we could fill in some of our larger uh, uh, divots and dents and we might try that on our other rim because we don't have anything crazy. So let me go ahead now and I'm gonna put this on the rim. I'll show you guys how that looks on and all you gotta do is sand it, uh, sand it back down lightly with some 220 grit sandpaper and that will cover up any of the the, the, the marks that we got that were specifically caused by the oxidation. Okay guys, now you can see where I've applied it and really all I'm gonna do is now take a 220 grit sandpaper and we're gonna lightly sand that away. It only needs to sit for about 20, 30 minutes, but you'll kinda know when it hardens. And uh, like I said a second ago, the even the amount of hardener I used the second time was still too much, so I went with a little less on that last coat. It's really easy to apply. You just kind of you can put a glove on, just use your finger and kind of smear it in, and it will press right into any small divots. And this rim's not going to be perfect. There, this rim was really, really destroyed. I mean, all three, all four of them um, were really destroyed. So the goal here is to get it the best we can and um, make it look as nice as we can, even from just a foot to five feet away. Okay, so after sanding the glazing putty, I went ahead and threw some degreaser on there, scrubbed it down. Now I'm just going to lightly rinse it off. I'm going to let that water dry. We're going to wipe it down with some alcohol, and we're going to spray another coat of primer on here just to make sure we don't have any other major things that we need to fill. And if it looks good, we're going to go on to painting, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do on the inside of this wheel well that's different than most people will do. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing something pretty unique on the inside barrel of the rim. And that is because there's so much pitting, oxidation, and I just really had to hit it with a, a wire wheel. And the photos that you guys, the videos you guys saw was not the worst rim. Actually, this rim here that I finally started getting to is just very, very oxidized. I'm going to have to use a lot of glazing putty on this front just to get it to look smooth. And I don't want to waste uh, too much effort and time into an area that's not going to be seen. And I really, really like the way truck bed liner uh, looks when it's kind of like a backdrop. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with some uh, black primer because we brought it down to a lot of the metal. And then we're going to hit it with a few coats of the truck bed liner on the inside barrel of each rim. So I've got the first rim already set up. I'm going to show you guys how that comes out. Okay, so my original thought process was I can just throw some bags in there because I still have to prep the front side. It's only been um, primered, so I'm going to be wet sanding it and setting it up for the first coat of the actual color we're going to be doing. But I realized that I really want to be able to see right inside this barrel. So my goal originally was just to spray the truck bed liner up towards the top here and not get down close so I didn't have to do too much more sanding. But what I did was I went back and taped off just the inside part of this barrel just so I could spray it right along there and you guys will see that in fast forward on this next section.
Guys, I know this is quite a long video, but I really want to fill you on these because if you have rims that you're looking to restore that are in anywhere as bad a shape as these, you're going to want to know these little tricks. Um, I went down and picked up an oscillating power tool. If you see here, it comes with the rectangle sandpaper. I'm not going to show any footage of it, but that allowed me to really grind into some of this heavy, heavy oxidation on that last rim, the one you guys saw at the very beginning of the video, the worst one that I pointed out. And I am finally getting to that point where I can start priming this one down.